micro folks. I'm hoping this is recording. This is February 18th, 2020, spring semester. We're on Unit 4 Metabolism. This is an audio recording to go along with our second PowerPoint um, Metabolism PowerPoint B. We had given an introduction to the early process of making ATP um, by fermentation. So we will, um, in this audio, we'll talk about a new way to make much more ATP, the process called aerobic respiration, and the um, incredible evolution of an electron transport chain that permitted um, cells to create a proton gradient across our membrane. And then um, we'll see how the cells use that proton gradient to drive massive ATP synthesis by a cool enzyme complex called ATP synthase. So we'll be introducing the concept of electron transport chains, um, ATP synthase, um, chemiosmosis. Chemiosmosis is the use of a chemical concentration gradient to do um, cellular work such as ATP production. So hopefully we can get started here. I'm hoping this is actually recording. Never sure with me. Okay. So again, folks, just to review the problems um, with fermentation. So you'll recall that the end products of fermentation, um, the acids, the alcohols, they're still chock full of high energy electrons. So we could say that it's a very wasteful process, fermentation is. And those end products, those acids and alcohols, if they build up, they can be toxic for cells. And then furthermore, um, after life had been fermenting for thousands of years, there was a food shortage. Um, initially, the first cells that evolved had literally these oceans of preformed organic molecules as a result of the era of chemical evolution. So the cells could be wasteful. They had so many organic molecules present. But after those cells grew and divided, and there was this population explosion, pretty soon these preformed organic molecules would have been used up. So we can think of a, of, a, of a famine almost happening. And as a result, then, there was natural selection for genetic mutants who um, evolved a way to generate more ATP per glucose. And not only was the bonus of extra ATP per glu glucose, but the end products of this new process um, weren't toxic. We weren't going to make acids and alcohols. So this was truly a win-win process. So this cool process that was evolved is called aerobic respiration. And what we're going to do is we're going to describe aerobic respiration kind of backwards. We're going to take a look at the cool things that evolved that permitted aerobic respiration to evolve. We're going to be looking at the electron transport chain. We'll be looking at porphyrin rings, why they were crucial for the evolution of aerobic respiration. So let's see if we can't tear this apart a little bit. So again, in, in trying to understand key events in aerobic respiration, we need to understand this concept of chemiosmosis. So ATP is not the only source of energy for cellular work. Cells can use chemical concentration gradients across their membranes as a source of energy to perform work. And we'll see in aerobic respiration, we're going to have such a chemical gradient formed across a membrane. And indeed, not only will this be a chemical gradient, we're going to see it's going to be an electro, electrochemical gradient. And this electrochemical gradient specifically that we'll see formed in aerobic respiration will be a proton gradient across a membrane. And thus, we will refer, refer to this potential source of energy as a proton motive force, or PMF. So this gradient of protons across a membrane, again, it represents the potential source of energy. Um, the proton gradient can be used to drive cellular work, and we'll see it's going to help drive massive ATP synthesis. But um, in further examples, we'll see that proton gradients can also be used, for example, by bacteria for motility to help drive um, flagellar rotation and proton gradients can also be used in active transport. So we're going to be throwing in lots of new words. So in aerobic respiration, we're going to be describing a new way to make ATP, which is called oxidative phosphorylation. And the, the driving force, the energy source, 
um, behind oxidative phosphorylation and ATP synthesis will be a proton motive force. <clears throat> so again, trying to compare fermentation to aerobic respiration. So what made aerobic respiration possible? What were the big evolutionary events? So um, first of all, as we mentioned, we have to be able to form a proton gradient across a membrane to drive our oxidative phosphorylation and synthesis of ATP. And so what forms a proton gradient in aerobic respiration is an electron transport chain. And we're always using initials. So ETC stands for electron transport chain. And this ETC then, its function is to form a proton gradient across a membrane. It's going to pump protons from one side of a membrane to the other side. And then again, it's going to be that proton gradient, that proton motive force that will be the energy that will drive ATP synthesis by this cool enzyme complex called ATP synthase. Okay, so we're going to combine formation of proton gradient by the electron transport chain. We're going to use that proton gradient to drive massive ATP synthesis by ATP synthase. And this way of making ATP using the proton gradient ATP synthase is referred to as oxidative phosphorylation. So this is our brand new way of making ATP. This is, this is um, oxidative phosphorylation in a nutshell simplified. So this, this circle represents our multi-part, um, multi-unit electron transport chain. We can see that um, high energy electrons ripped off organic molecules will be delivered to the electron transport chain. It's those high energy electrons from our organic molecules that are the energy that help drives the proton pumping, which is a form of active transport. It's high energy electrons that the ETC uses to pump protons across the membrane against their concentration gradient. So again, this is active transport. And then once the ETC has formed that proton gradient, the protons then are going to diffuse through this incredible enzyme complex called ATP synthase. And so the protons are going to move from a high concentration to low concentration. And in some ways you can think of this almost as an electrical current, except we don't have electrons flowing. We have these positively charged protons flowing. And as they flow through the ATP synthase, it provides the energy to drive the phosphorylation of ADP to ATP. All right, so that's the, the big picture here. <clears throat> so again, we want to look at this um, from an evolutionary point of view. want to say, um, how did oxidative phosphorylation and aerobic respiration evolve? What was required? So we, again, we need our proton pumps, um, our pumping station for electron transport chain. Furthermore, in the electron transport chain, we're going to require cytochromes or electron carriers. And then um, at the end of the electron transport chain, the electrons who originally were high energy electrons, now they've given up lots of their energy. They're low energy electrons. At the end of the electron transport chain, we require a terminal electron acceptor. And you'll recall in aerobic respiration, that's going to be molecular oxygen. But again, going back in history, when the first cells evolved, there weren't any electron transport chains. There was no cytochromes. And their um, Earth's atmosphere was anaerobic. There was no free molecular oxygen in the air. So some big events had to happen, right, before we saw evolution of ETCs and cytochromes, before we saw evolution of an aerobic environment here on Earth. So let's take a look at what some of those events were. So this, to me, folks, was such a big event, the evolution of porphyrin rings. And we'll see the evolution of porphyrin rings really made um, evolution of aerobic respiration possible. So why are these porphyrin rings so important? Well, they're crucial parts of photosynthetic pigments such as bacteria chlorophyll, which permits a process called anoxygenic photosynthesis, which we'll talk about more later. And porphyrin rings are crucial parts of chlorophyll A. And we know that chlorophyll A permitted the evolution of oxygenic photosynthesis and evolution of oxygenic photosynthesis permitted the evolution of an O2 rich environment. So it was this event that led to Earth's atmosphere um, converting from an anaerobic environment to an aerobic oxygen rich environment. That was a big deal. So the conversion um, from anaerobic to aerobic environment, there's a lot of discussion. I think it's still debatable. 
but we'll just use just very rough, maybe around 2.6 billion years ago, so maybe a billion years after the first cells evolved, we then had a relatively aerobic environment. Um, today, our aerobic environment has a 21% molecular oxygen content. Now, in addition, the evolution of porphyrin rings also permitted evolution of heme prosthetic groups which are crucial parts of cytochromes, our electron carriers in the ETC. So indeed, the cytochromes, when they evolved, that permitted evolution of electron transport chain, which is essential for cellular respiration, aerobic respiration, right? So um, as microbiologists, folks, whenever we see respiration, whenever we see respiration, we think that an electron transport chain is involved it, in Microbiology, if we, if we say anaerobic respiration, this means there's an ETC, electron transport chain, but the term electron acceptor is a molecule other than oxygen. And then in contrast, in microbiology, if we say aerobic respiration, we say there's an electron transport chain involved, that's how we interpret respiration, and the terminal electron acceptor is going to be oxygen. So we could sum it all up, you know, why was the evolution of porphyrin rings so important? Because they permitted evolution of aerobic respiration in which molecular oxygen acts as a terminal electron acceptor for the electron transport chain.